13. Marvelous Medicine Number 3. Here it is! cried Mr. Kilcranky, rushing into the kitchen. One carton of flea powder for dogs, and one tin of brown shoe polish. George poured the flea powder into the giant saucepan. Then he scooped up the shoe polish out of the tin and added that as well. Stir it up, George, said Mr. Kilcranky. Give it another boil. We've got it this time. I'll bet we've got it. After marvelous medicine number three had been boiled and stirred, George took a cupful of it into the yard to try it on another chicken. Mr. Kilcranky ran after him, flapping his arms and hopping with excitement. Come on and watch this one! He called out to Mrs. Cranky. Come and watch us turn an ordinary chicken into a lovely giant big one that lays eggs as large as footballs. I hope you do better than last time, said Mrs. Cranky, following them out. Come on, chicken, said George, holding out a spoonful of medicine number three. Good chicken. Chicka, 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 chicken. Have some of this lovely medicine. A magnificent black cockatiel with a scarlet comb over stepped over. The cockatiel looked out at the spoon and went peck. cock a doo doo, -doo! squawked the cockatiel, shooting up into the air and coming down again. Watch him now, cried Missile, Mr. Cranky. Watch him grow. Any moment he's going to start getting bigger and bigger. Mr. Cranky, Mrs. Cranky, and little George stood in the yard, staring at the black cockerel. The cockerel stood quite still. It looked as though it had a headache. What's happening to its neck? Mrs. Cranky said. It's getting longer, George said. I'll say it's getting longer, Mrs. Cranky said. Mr. Cranky, for once, said nothing. Last time it was the legs, Mrs. Cranky said. Now it's the neck. Who wants a chicken with a long neck? You can't eat a chicken's neck. It was an extraordinary sight. The cockerel's body hadn't grown at all, but the neck was now six feet long. All right, George, Mr. Cranky said. What else have you forgotten? I don't know, George said. Oh, yes, you do, Mr. Cranky said. Come along, boy, think. There's probably just one vital thing missing, and you've got to remember it. I put in some engine oil from the garage, George said. Did you have that on your list? Eureka! cried Mr. Cranky. That's the answer! How much did it put in? Half a pint, George said. Mr. Cranky ran to the garage and found a half a pint of oil. And some antifreeze, George called after him. I sloshed in a bit of antifreeze.